Empathy is my superpower. Recently, someone asked me to describe what it means to take care of myself, and I couldn't think of an answer. In fact, as much as I like to take care of others, I don't even know what it means to care for myself. The last time I remember doing something I really wanted to do, I was a toddler. I really wanted to be a ballerina. I was so excited. I was so excited. My heart was pounding in my striped bumblebee tights, cotton purple leotard and old costume tutu as I rushed to my first dance class. That's the last time I remember only thinking of myself. Both of my parents teach me the difference between right and wrong, and that a part of being empathetic is understanding another person's point of view. But they also fight for a living. They're both lawyers. So they also teach me that once you know a person's strengths and weaknesses, you can use it against them. They teach me how to win a fight. And growing up, my parents fight a lot. I remember being four years old, sitting on our dusty blue couch in the living room window, a slight breeze blowing the crystal-like translucent curtains around my face. The house smells like lavender laundry, with a hint of mold, and the sun is fiery hot. My parents stand face to face in the doorway, a giant bouquet of roses is lying on the floor between them because my mother just thrown them, has just thrown them there. Her face is red with rage. She has just finished a double shift, she says, and this gift is a waste of money. But even then, as a little girl, I, read, I can read their faces. I feel the pain at the sight of tears on my mother's face, the look of hopelessness and defeat on my dad's. I want to mend their wounds, stitch up their pain. For as long as I can remember, it's been my job to take care of other people, to put other people's needs before my own, even save them, especially my mother. Like was I, when I was six years old, mom is outside trimming the big magnolia tree. We've just gotten back from the gro grocery store. Berries and veggies fill the fridge, and the newly weightless grocery bags drift across the kitchen floor. Dressed in my usual uniform, 100% cotton Kohl's tank top, and one size too small shorts, I run barefoot out the front door, my steps slamming down on the cold, shady concrete, sloshing into the wet mountain grass. Pools of water envelop my toes. With a pint of fresh grape tomatoes, I climb to my favorite spot on the top of the magnolia tree and munch away. Each one is juicier than the last. I try eating with different techniques biting one in half and slurping the seeds, then throwing one up in the air and catching it in my mouth. When I get to my last grape tomato, I climb down to show mom one of my new techniques. I face her, hold up the tomato, and squeeze. But instead of splitting neatly down the middle, it bursts and a cocktail of seeds, sour juice, and my will to live shoots straight into her eye. She screams and covers her face with her hands. I don't hesitate. I react immediately, running as fast as I can to the house to grab a warm washcloth, paper towels, an ice pack, and a band-aid. <laughs> running back into the sun, I put the washcloth on my mom's eye and carefully walk her inside. I am determined to be the one to clean up the mess. I'm not just like this with my family. I take care of my friends, too. Like last month in Nepal, I'm in Kathmandu, volunteering for the Himalayan Children's Charity. I'm there in honor of Maya. She dreamed of going to Nepal after graduation. Our group has been walking for hours and we approach a car full of police officers to ask for directions. I notice that one of the officers is eyeing my friend Taylor. He is staring at her backside. I step in front of Taylor to block his view, screaming, ew, stop. The whole car full of men laugh. I, put, I start pushing the whole crowd of teen girls away from the car to protect them from the grown men. I know I shouldn't look back, but I can't help it. Wham, there I am, middle finger raised in a sea of thousands of people. I go to school because I know other kids aren't as lucky. I apply to college because I want to make my dad proud. I do lacrosse because I know the team needs a goalie. I go to Nepal because Maya can't. I laugh because Becca can't. I wish empathy, my superpower, could have saved Maya and Becca, but even my empathy couldn't fill the void. I have to remind myself that it's not my fault. 
If I could write a letter to my younger self, the one in the bumblebee tights, eating grape tomatoes at the top of the magnolia tree, here's what I would say. Please don't be insecure. Say no more often. Empathy is still your superpower, and you will always stand up for what's right. It's part of what makes you special. But what is the purpose of empathy at the expense of your own happiness and fulfillment? Learn to take care of yourself too. And while things might not get better, you will get stronger. Empathy, compassion, and love start here.